Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, you. Welcome to the podcast. This is Sarah Allred, and it is interview day. And boy, do I have a treat for you. Okay. Something that has driven me for so long in business is that I would do anything on earth to keep certain women in business because selfishly they bless my life in huge ways. And our guest today is one of those people. We have got the one and only Brooke Romney here on the podcast. Welcome, Brooke. I'm so glad you're here. Wow, Sarah, you're the best hype girl ever. (laughs) It's my dream. It's my dream. And literally when we got on the Zoom call to record this, I just was like, this is a bucket list moment for me that I get to sit across from you. Oh my gosh. So let me tell you a little bit about Brooke Romney. Okay. The first time I was ever, oh, I got to be in actually the same space as you was Time Out for women. It was pre COVID. Yeah. So it was 2019. And I was actually sitting right behind you because I was a guest of Emily Freeman's. Right. Yes. So I felt super VIP. It's like as VIP as you can get without actually going on stage. So I was sitting behind you. Your husband was there and I was like, I wonder what she's all about. Like, I didn't know you very well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw you take the stage and I was like fangirling it. Okay. You commanded the presence of that Time Out for Women stage. It was in Arizona. I will never forget it. And I actually remember very little of anything you said, but I remember how I felt when you were speaking. And I felt seen, I felt heard, and I felt absolutely like the sky was like, there was no limit to what I could accomplish in God's work because of what you said on that stage. It was powerful, wow. Brooke. Thank you. So, I mean, that's the best compliment I could ever get. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh, so if you don't know her, okay, you can pause the podcast for a minute um, and you can head over to Brooke Romney writes. It's also in the show notes and in the YouTube links below, but you will find that she does this incredible series um, called teen talk Tuesday And you have this ability to tackle really tough topics, everything from the election, everything from the Black Lives Matter movement, um, failure. I mean, you just dive into current events with teens. Um, Mm -hmm. Why are you not scared to talk about things that are hard? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I am. I wouldn't say I'm never scared. There are certain topics that are definitely harder than others, but I do believe that when we are willing to engage with one another um, in conversation that scary things get less scary. And when we have education and when we can learn from one another, then we feel comfortable engaging. And so I wanted to start that ability young in my house and help my boys. I have four boys, help my boys be more comfortable with not only who they are, but the world around them. Oh my word. I can't imagine like what your household is like, the ability to tackle some of those tough things head on. I'm going to put you on the spot. What has been one of the hardest things to cover on Teen Talk Tuesday? Oh, um, anything having to do with the election was the (laughs) hardest. (laughs) Um, I have to say that I was so happy when it was over because we could start talking about different things. It because it just dominated headlines and to not talk about it felt like you weren't in tune with what was going on. So um, personally, my favorite topics are ones that aren't quite so front and center. Things like quitting or failure um, or I don't know, resilience, things like that. So I try to kind of go back and forth to have one topic that's more current event and then one that maybe hits home a little bit more for teens. I love it. And I'm so grateful for you because you were like one of my trusted sources on how to handle the election in my own family. I mean, yeah, I was like, what's was a Brooke lot. saying? I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know lot. what to say, right? <laughs> right. Oh, I love it so much. So I'm going to I'm gonna approach you with a heavy topic because that's okay. what you're really, really good at. You have done the Time Out for Women scene. You have an incredible book called I Like Me Anyways, and or I Like Me Anyway. And I... I'm amazed at what you've been able to accomplish as a woman, as a member of the church, as a mother, those four wonderful boys that you have. Um, One of the things that stops us, and we've been talking the past couple of weeks on the podcast about the heroine's journey, that one of the things that stops us in that journey is we don't, we feel like an outsider. We feel like, Mm. look, I'm I'm a woman, I'm a member of the church. Motherhood is the most divine call on earth. 
why would I feel driven to write a book? Like, I'm not supposed to do something like that. Tackle that girl. What does, what does that mean to you? Um, well, I think we're all called to all different kinds of people and places. And I think it really depends on whether listening to the spirit and when we are, we can feel confidence in our purpose. And so I, you know, people talk a lot about, you know, working versus being home and how do you, you know, balance and all these things. And one of the things that I have really learned is when I'm in tune with the spirit, I know when it's time to push and when it's time to pull back. Um, and then God knows me. And so he's going to give me opportunities at the right time in my life for me to go after them. Um, for example, there was a time in our family um, that one of my kids really, really needed me. And so I had to put writing on the back burner. I, I did it here and there. I published articles sometimes for the Deseret News, but I didn't have any hard deadlines. I actually wasn't pushing toward a goal at the time because my mind and my body would not be capable of doing both in that moment. And I look back and I do not regret the fact that I was dialed in um, to that child who needed me so much for those couple of years. The awesome thing is, is that when some of that heaviness lifted from our family, I was given lots of opportunities to pursue the thing that I did love and felt passionate about. And so I don't look back and say, oh, you know, I missed the boat. I missed my chance. I missed my opportunity. I'm grateful for the time that I was able to devote myself to what was most important. And I'm also grateful for the opportunities to have these experiences and these chances again um, with a new perspective. And so I would say to women, if you feel called, then do it. And if you feel called not to for a season, that's, that's okay too. I love this. And I'm getting goosebumps with the fact that you don't live in regret. Okay. Yeah. And I've had really personal discussions and I'm going to have to put you in the room with some of these women that do feel like they've missed the boat. Maybe, I mean, I'm about to turn 40 people y'all party on. Yeah. Okay. And they feel like I missed it. And they, and they start to resent either the young kid stage, or they start to resent what they put on the line for their husband's career. Like, so what would you say to women who are living in that state of regret? All right. Well, first of all, um, I would ask them to try and move from that state. Regret isn't a great place to be, and it doesn't serve anyone. Um, and it doesn't further your purpose. And so instead of being regretful, I'd, I'd ask you to look back at what you learned, what you gained, the relationships that you built during that time. Because for me, if I would have published a book at 24, the book wouldn't be great. I, that wasn't my purpose at 24, but being able to publish something at 41, um, I've learned a few things and there's things that are, were worth sharing um, from my heart. And so I would say to move past that and then to be able to really embrace who you are right now. So instead of being bummed that you spent three years as a young women's president, instead of building a business for three years, realize all you learned, everything you gained from that experience and how it flows into who you are today and what your purpose now is. Um, I think we can get so caught up into it. You know, I should have, I wish I would have, that was my opportunity. Um, one of my favorite stories is Colonel Sanders who opened Kentucky fried chicken. He did it in his late seventies. And no, he is was, that true? Yes, yes. He, he was, he was this hothead. He'd been an attorney. He'd done all these things. And he finally was successful in his late seventies. And so I think about myself and I'm so grateful that I'm only 41, but I'm just beginning. And there's something really exciting about being able to say, I have found a calling or a purpose or reinvent myself. And I think that's part of why we're here. I'm absolutely dying about Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Right. That's I'm so like, funny. Man, 70 is the new 20. This is great. Right? This is so <laughs> good. And I love what you said about like, like what's like, it's over. What's done is done. Like maybe the child rearing years of little, little people, maybe you're out of diapers now. Um, like it is over. And how can you reflect on it in like a really powerful way? 
a really yeah. powerful way to bring peace, rewrite, rewrite what you think um, your past life looks like and see what it's offered you. And man, don't we, don't we all think we knew everything when we were 25 and those books would have been yes. a full blown disaster, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> So one of the things I love about you, and I feel like we are soul sisters in this sense, in the sense that we want to play big in life. You have been an absolute example to me of playing big in a marriage and listeners. What does that look like to you playing big in your parenting? What does that look like listeners? And now playing big as a speaker and as an author, and you've got huge things coming up, which I know I can't share that I'm really excited about. Um, What do you think are the secrets between like dabbling in a whatever life and then playing big in life? What does that look like? Well, I think the dabbling part is super important because you have to try things out and you have to do things in a little bit of way so that you start to feel comfortable. I think a lot of times, at least for me, I would look at these people who quote unquote seemed like they had arrived, right? Right. Right. And then you get together with them and they're just people who make dinner every night and who go to a friend's birthday lunch and, and, you know, fulfill a calling and, and then they do these really awesome things. And so kind of remembering that everyone's just the same. No one has technically arrived at any point and everyone's just a regular person following the spirit, following their path. Um, but one of the ways that I, that has helped me play big is to say yes. Um, to say yes to almost everything. (laughs) And I know there's a big push, um, to protect your time and to protect your space and to say no often. And I definitely understand that there is a place for that. And I think in a normal life, I think there's a big place for that. If you are trying to play big, if you are trying to grow yourself or grow your business or grow your platform, um, you're going to have to say yes. And you're going to have to say yes a lot. I, I kind of love this. And we had a little prep period, like two minutes before we recorded this. And you were talking about this concept of like, I actually don't think in the beginning stages, you should say no. Like the best way to start getting into a big space is to say, yes, yes, yes. And then when you feel like you've hit some certain things that are rocking and rolling for you, that's when you start to, to reassess and say no. And I would imagine you've talked a lot about the spirit, which this is why I love this podcast is because we can be full blown honest about the role of the spirit in business. Um, what are your personal habits that you feel invite the spirit more fully so that you can be hugely aware of when it's time to say yes, when it's time to say no, yes, it's okay for me to play big and it's okay for me to publish a book and be on stage as a mom. Like what, what does your life look like that nurtures that? That is an awesome question. And I am the least, um, (laughs) let's see. I'm the least structured person I know, Sarah. Oh, sweet. Welcome to the party. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to tell you this recipe for being fabulous and successful and having the spirit. And I would just say the only thing that I feel like I do is I listen and I act on it. I, I try to have good prayers. I try to read my scriptures Um, I try to listen to uplifting podcasts and things that fill my soul and my spirit. Um, but there is no replacement, at least for me, because this is how it works for me in listening and acting on the spirit. And so when heavenly father tells me that he wants me to do something, I just try and do it. And it's sometimes scary. And actually a lot of times, I mean, the whole reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because he said, it's time. And, and these are the thoughts and these are the words. And I thought a lot about, um, the book and, and how it came to pass. And, um, at the end of my acknowledgements, I say something, I I won't be able to quote myself exactly, but I said something like, I'm thankful to my heavenly father because these are his, and I was the scribe. And I feel like he knows I'm willing And I've put a lot of time and effort into becoming a writer that can reach people and becoming someone like living a life that understands empathy and people and connection. 
Um, and so when he called me, I was ready. And then I was willing because it actually was not good timing. And there was a lot going on. And I wasn't sure I could do it. And then, you know, we talk, uh, you know, I've talked about, you know, I, I turned this manuscript in to a publisher I thought like was would be thrilled about it. And they said no. Um, and so I just continued to listen and continued to act and acting is a huge part of being able to fulfill your purpose. I am so fascinated by this because as you've talked about, like, um, you know, having the spirit with you all the time, then you've talked about here acting. Um, it seems like the adversary is really good at making us stall. Yes. Right. I would agree fester and make a mountain out of a molehill out of that rejection from that publisher. And I've never felt so angry people when I heard that. Anyway, (laughs) moving on. (laughs) I'm so so grateful Brooke recovered from it. Right. (laughs) Yes. Um, But I'm, I'm just seeing all of these patterns, even when like, let's say you've, someone has kids still at home and they feel like, well, I'm not supposed to feel called to do something like this, that it's a stall tactic. Yeah. Yeah. When I would just say, like, keep pressing forward. You know, I, I started an Instagram account six years ago and it was my friends and family that followed me for, I don't know, maybe three or four years, you know, but it was the consistency. People will ask me all the time, Hey, I have this great idea. I want to start this blog. I want to start this account. Like, what's your advice? And I always say like, are you in it for the long game? Because people will do it for six months and no one's responding and no one's buying and no one's commenting. And they think, well, I don't belong here. I don't belong in this space. Other people are doing it so well. And really most people who are successful are successful because they just stayed at it. They've been consistent. They've shown up and they've given it their best for lots and lots of years. And I cannot tell you how many people have contacted me, you know, asking for that advice and who will just, you know, trickle away in six months. And the people that don't are the ones who continue to build their audience, but you've got to have patience. You've got to have grit. You've got to have resilience and you have to feel called because you don't get the rewards usually very quickly. This is such a powerful message because it applies in so many ways. It, re- it, re- it applies to building the spirit in your life. It applies to building a marriage. Mm-hmm. You've got to show up to a marriage all the time consistently. Like it's consistency. Yeah. It's not the Friday date nights that keep a marriage together. Can I say that like out loud? Yep. It is the in between right. date nights that keep a marriage in that kind of a state. And, and I, man, we are like sisters in so many ways where I encourage my, my clients and my entrepreneurs. I said, publish every day. I don't care if it's podcast or Instagram or email or in some form, you've got to publish every day and it will absolutely change your business. It will change your business. And I love that we can broaden that. I've never made that connection that what you're saying is, is that the consistency shows up for you on Instagram, but it also helps you refine your voice and find your audience. And, and now we have this incredible book because of your resilience to be consistent and develop your voice. I'm grateful for you. I'm so glad you have You're the willingness so great. to do it. <laughs> Sarah, I did want to point out one thing about that too. And, and the book, and I talked to you a little bit about this, um, but my book, I had all these ideas and I've had them for, a, I'd had them for over a year probably. And I just kept thinking, how do I put them all in a book? You know, I don't want just these, thoughts from everyone. And I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. And I was on the timeout for women speaking circuit and I was so busy and I was really, really stretched. And my stake Relief Society president asked if I could come speak at our stake Relief Society meeting. And it was right at the same time as my very first timeout for women presentation. And I couldn't do the same one. So it's, you know, it's kind of against the rules to do that. So I thought, I don't have time to write another talk. She wanted me to do it on a theme that they'd already decided, which flow with anything I'd already prepared. And I said, I can't do this. So I was looking for every reason not to. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll use Time Out for Women as an excuse. And I just felt like I couldn't say no. It was my own stake. And I love these women. And so I said yes. And out of that meeting came my book. 
the whole theme, the whole woman with the issue of blood is what they asked me to speak about. And it brought my entire book together. I had a thought, I had a thesis, I had a reason for all these stories to come together and a purpose. And so as people are listening, you know, take every opportunity you can take them all, you know, and sometimes we have to say no, sometimes it just doesn't work, but do what you can to put yourself at every lunch, every group. Um, if somebody, I can't tell you how many things I've said, sure, I'll be a part of that. Yeah. You want to do a giveaway? I'm in. And instead of feeling like we have to protect ourselves or protect our brand, my philosophy is to open ourselves up. Like, bring people in, let people be a part of it, be excited for others, cheer other people on. And I just think really good things happen in return. Oh, and it's fascinating because as an outsider, because, because I was introduced to you through Time Out for Women, I've since been able to share a space with you, which is great. But you would have thought that the thing that would have spurred your massive opportunities would have been Time Out for Women. But it was yeah, actually right? the steak talk that you gave. What? Like that doesn't Isn't make that sense. Crazy? It's and and so many of the things I learned at Time Out for Women, things I've spoken about are in my book. Um, but for it to all come together it took me being able to say yes to this one experience. Oh, I love that. So I'm learning from you, like take full confidence in the spirit directing you. And then second, the the opportunities may lead to things so unexpected. So say yes. Just yeah. say yes in that realm. So to kind of finalize things, one of the things I would love to learn from you about is the ability to get over fear and failure. And I know you teach this about your teenager, teenagers and how to teach them and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is you had written this book. It, it was clear as day that this is how it all pulled together. Um, you thought, I've got a publisher in my back pocket. This is incredible. You submit it. It's a no. And at what point did you not say, okay, God's telling me not yet or pause mm. or, and, but like, how did you handle that? I didn't handle it, girl. When your book, <laughs> you did <laughs> how did you handle it? <laughs> you know, I, it's really interesting because I just always knew that the book needed to be published no matter how it was going to get out there. And I have to say I felt so good about writing it and the inspiration that came through the writing process that I thought if this only goes to my family, then it, it just goes to my family. Like this is, and I feel like I had to be at a point where I, I thought this is worth it no matter what the outcome is, whether that's financially or business wise. I was so passionate about the message and about the things that I wanted, the people that I love to know that it had to be a labor of love that I felt personally satisfied with, whether the world felt satisfied with it or not. And because of that, I think I had, you know, the fortitude to press on and look for other options. Um, it's incredible that we live in a day where we can self-publish, where Amazon can print our books on demand, um, where the internet allows us to have audiences and people who are interested in what we're doing. So I think, you know, a common that there really are no limits as long as we're willing to press forward with passion and with an internal belief that what we have is what the world needs, um, even if, even if it's not a smashing success. Oh, this is so powerful. I mean, I'm like, what should I title this episode? It's like, stop stalling. That's what I would title this yes. episode because you are such, like, I think about how the world would change if women were totally confident that God was commanding them to do the things that were in their heart, how would the world change? Instead of us waiting, second guessing, like what all that would look like, oh, the world would be so different, right? Well, and Sarah, can I tell you too, one of the things that I think people get caught up on is remember all of the years of work that go into feeling confident and ready. And I'm not saying like, like you have to wait until you're 50 before you do anything and you have all the experience. What I'm saying is you do have to put in the time. You got to write a lot before you're ready to publish a book, right? You have to go through iteration upon iteration before a product is ready. 
Um, and so I think when you've put that time in and that work and that effort and you feel inspired and you feel called, then the outcome is a success no matter what, um, whether you lose money or make money. Okay, we're now here to announce Brooke Romney is going to be a regular guest on the podcast because she brings down the house. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit here and like, I served my mission in Detroit and I like want to sing. Oh, I love it. Choir, like, amen, 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 amen. Okay. <laughs> I love this so much. And I just love that you can embrace that it's a world, it's, it's a life of no regret. It is embracing the present. And that is such mm -hmm. a beautiful way to live. Uh, I just think how the world is so blessed because you are sharing um, that message. So, wonderful, wonderful listeners. Okay. If you did not know Brooke Romney before, you obviously want to know her now. No questions asked. So head on over to Brooke Romney writes on Instagram. Um, you can get her book. I like me anyway. She has it on Amazon, which is marvelous. There also is an audible version and she herself reads it. And she obviously, I mean, her, I, I read her book like in one sitting, maybe two days after I got it tears down my face and highlighted the entire thing. She's going to be on my Insta stories, reading the introduction for you if you want to hear her actually read it. But it is a game changer. And you know that I never promote things that I haven't held in my own little sweet hands. And there, there was a reason that this was supposed to be written, like 110%. And so if you need that push, it's called I Like Me Anyway by Brooke Romney, Embracing Imperfection, Connection, and Christ man, you are a powerhouse. I'm so grateful that we could share this time. Um, in closing, just give me your final little thoughts to women who feel a little bit, a teeny bit of fear in wanting to accomplish some of the things that they feel called to do. What are your closing remarks to them? Well, I would just replace your fear with excitement because there are so many incredible opportunities. And whether that's fear that you're not a great mom, start getting excited about being a great mom, whether that's fear that like, oh, if I do this, then my marriage is going to, you know, suffer, be excited about a more equal partnership and the lessons that come through that. If you're, if there's fear that it's not going to be a success, be excited that you have the opportunity to try. And I just love that we live in a day and age where women have the opportunity to try over and over again. And that if you are inspired, maybe it's not you're inspired to have, you know, to make a million dollars, even though Sarah will promote that, but that'd be great. Even if you're, in, <laughs> even if you're inspired and you don't make a million dollars, there are so many incredible life lessons and gifts that you learn along the way that are truly priceless. And so I would just tell you, replace fear with excitement and look forward to the opportunity that you've been given. Oh, Brooke, I'm so glad I get to do life with you. I am so, so, so fun. Glad. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. And Brooke and I both agree in one big thing. And that that is we are sent here on earth to become something. And your road is going to look different than my road. Your road is going to look different than Brooke Romney's road. But we, we put our voices together to say, become something and listen to the spirit on what that road is. Thanks again, Brooke, for being on the podcast. Thank you, Sarah.